ihomeschoolnetwork.com for another one of our weekly iHomeschool Hangouts. You can find us here each and every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. Thursdays. If you can't make it here live, you can always watch us on YouTube. And also, we have most of our videos on our landing page at ihomeschoolnetwork.com slash hangouts. Today, I've got a great panel of ladies with me, and we're going to be chatting about how to organize your homeschool. Uh, once again, like everything homeschool related, it's going to be it's going to be individual to you and your family. So I'll take a moment to introduce everybody. I'm Diana Kennedy. Like I said, you can find me at the Kennedy Adventures, where I write about life with a large family, uh, living my Catholic faith, um, and I am a mom of soon to be six. Colleen, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I am Colleen Kessler. I blog over at RaisingLifelongLearners.com. I am a uh, work-at-home mom, homeschooling four kids. One is a baby, so he's not being homeschooled yet, kind of. Um, I write a lot about uh, homeschooling gifted kids, the, the pitfalls that go along with parenting gifted kids, and um, just life, life at home. Excellent. Heidi, let's hear from you. Hi everyone, I'm Heidi. I blog over at startsatate.com. Um, newly blogging about my high schooler since it's my first uh, delve into homeschooling high school. And you can also find me over at Hip Homeschool Moms, where I'm a social media leader and a site contributor. Excellent. Um, you'll figure out that a lot of us blog uh, not only at our own sites, but um, you'll find a lot of us kind of scattered throughout the web. Marlene? Hi everyone, I'm Marlene and I blog over at adiligentheart.com, just a little bit about, about everything in life and homeschooling, marriage, faith, kids, just a little bit of everything. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, for those of you guys that have, have watched us in the past, um, actually all of my girls today have been on the panel before. Um, Sam? Hey everybody, I'm Sam Kelly. I blog over at Sam's Noggin where I talk about faith, family, homeschooling, and fitness. I'm a work at home mom and a homeschooling mom and a work away from home mom, so I'm pretty busy these days. All right, thanks a bunch. Um, today, like we talked about, we're going to be talking about organizing your homeschool. And um, probably one of the first questions that I get from people when they figure out that I'm a homeschooling mom, the first comment um, two things. They say, oh my gosh, you must be so organized, or oh my gosh, you must be so patient. <laughs> and um, I am neither of those. So I'm going to be leaning on, leaning heavily on my panel today for some tips because my homeschool is a big hot mess of disorganizational fail right now. Um, so I'm going to be learning from you ladies and also from the girls over in the event rooms. So if you've got some comments or tips or questions, please leave them over there and we'll get to them as we can. Um, one thing I'd like to um, just remind people is that a lot of us don't have a dedicated homeschool room. We kind of homeschool sort of wherever we can. Um, and we'll, we'll start there. I just basically want to hear from you guys. Do you have a dedicated room? If not, what kind of space are you using? I'm actually going to start down with Sam on the end. Um, we have a dedicated homeschool room here. Um, we haven't always utilized it. It was kind of like the fourth place that we homeschooled. I actually have a lot of blog posts that shows the progression of the rooms in our houses that we moved the homeschool room to. It kept getting bigger and bigger. We started out in a little breakfast nook that we have with a little table when we very first started homeschooling. But we soon realized that that place was... Um, much too cramped for us. And then we kind of moved over into the formal dining room and that was kind of making my OCD go into overdrive because if we were in the middle of a project, we couldn't just get up and leave everything where it was. And, you know, it was in a very seen place in our home. We didn't let her mess in mind while learning the name to be affected if there was somebody coming over. And um, it just kind of made me crazy. So then we ended up moving our homeschool room into a large area that's kind of open in our upstairs and we had used it kind of as a playroom. I guess it was intended to be more like a family room 
um, but we don't utilize it in that way. So it ended up being the perfect space for our home school room. So it's rather large. It's a nice open room. The only thing I wish it had was a lot more natural light. It has like one of those little windows that's like in a little nook, and so it can be kind of dark up there at times. Um, but other than that, space-wise, for six kids homeschooling, it, it fits our needs perfectly. And if you haven't seen that, you'll need to um, pop over on the event page and check out the pictures of Sam's of Sam's uh, room. Even though she says it's not doesn't have a whole lot of natural light, um, she's used utilized some great uh, just bright non-traditional colors. I absolutely love it. This kind of jazz thing. That it looks awesome. Yes, that was to help with that. <laughs> and remind me, because you're you're how many? Tell me how many you're homeschooling and what their ages are again. Six. Um, we just started kindergarten with our five-year-old this year, so there are, I, I always start from the oldest to the youngest, so we have 16, 13, 10, 9, 7, and 5. Okay, perfect. Marlene, what about you? Um, our homeschool area where we homeschool is actually, it kind of takes over our living room a little bit. Um, we have one of those living dining areas that kind of feed into each other, and we live in a small apartment. So I just kind of took over a little wall and put all their stuff up there. And then we have a bookshelf with all the books and the school table. Um, it doesn't mean we always do school there, but that's our main hub. Um, sometimes we'll do school on the couch or outside or just wherever we want to. But I like having sort of a dedicated area for our school stuff. I love the idea of, of doing school outside um, because in the south we, we have nice weather um, pretty much year round. Our winters tend to be very short and very mild so we could we could take it outside even now you know as we're heading into mid-October. But um, for me I don't, how do you keep your kids from, like my kids wouldn't be focused. <laughs> they would be like running around every, it would be playtime, it wouldn't be like let's sit down and do school. Um, I guess since my oldest is 11 and then the next one in line, she's four, my 11-year-old knows. She just gets there. She does either her reading or we'll talk about what we're learning that day. And it's really mostly just my four-year-old kind of follows the lead of her big sister. And then obviously I'll give her direction to let's finish our schoolwork and then we can hop up and play. And I think the anticipation of finishing what she's doing to then go off and play, she actually does really well. Um, so I've never really had that problem. It's mostly chasing after my one-year-old who doesn't have to do school. <laughs> but all in all, I mean, it's okay. I mean, we, we like it. It's fun. Um, and it's always worked so far. Hopefully it'll keep working. <laughs> I'm glad to know that I'll get to that point at some, at some time <laughs> where Rachel will figure out that, hey, if I just get this done, then I'm going to have the whole day to do whatever. So, um, Heidi, I think if I remember correctly, your homeschool area is kind of in the living room as well, or am I am I remembering? I'm not remembering that right. And I have a dedicated homeschool room, but it actually is what used to be sort of our family room. So it kind of flows from the homeschool space to the eat-in kitchen area to the kitchen. So it's kind of like the whole back wall of our house is kind of flows together. So um, we actually lived in a much smaller house before this where our dining room, kitchen, living room, homeschool room, everything was all one little tiny space and um, when we moved I really wanted our own space to be able to leave projects out if we weren't finished or you know whatever. I was tired of cleaning the kitchen table to eat at it for three meals a day and clear everything off. So we do have um, our own designated homeschool space now and I can't imagine doing it without it. Even my husband, who is incredibly laid back about clutter and mess, um, just mentioned to me the other day that he is going to want to build a classroom in the basement because the more children that we have, um, the more stuff we have. So he's kind of getting a little tired of um, stepping over things and working my, around things. My problem was I had books and resources and everything all over the house, you know. So it was like, oh, I know I have this book somewhere, but which bookshelf is it buried on and which, you know, what little nook or what little bin and and uh, so for us to be able to have the designated space we built nice big bookshelves and we have lots of large of like the cardboard um, file folder boxes and I use those to store all kinds of craft supplies and keep them organized on the shelves and for me it just really alleviated so much of that where is everything 
And, um, you know, and I like having that space and knowing that everything's there because it saves me time from having to find everything. No, and you bring up a fantastic point, and I and I love that because that's like me. I do. I have things. I mean, all all over Kingdom Come. Um, one of the folks in the event room, Shelly G, mentions that um, her one requirement that when she buys a new house is that there's a room for homeschooling, ain't because she wants somewhere to be able to just keep keep all of this stuff organized. So now, listen, I was super excited to have Colleen here today because she's going to give us a little bit different. I saved you for last for a reason. She's going to give us a little bit of a different perspective. I, I want to make sure that I, that I express to people, the people that are discerning homeschooling, you absolutely do not have to have a dedicated area. That's great, and that's like my dream world, but you can, and there are a lot of us that do homeschool, Many many children in a small space, and I'm going to let Colleen tackle that huge topic. Um, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I wrote a little bit about that on my blog today, um, in anticipation of today's hangout. Um, we lived for a long time in a 3,000 square foot house and had converted our dining room into a gorgeous natural light filled uh, homeschool space, which I loved. Um, and uh, about a year and a half ago we decided to downsize, pay off debt, and get a place with land because we were kind of tired about putting uh, kind of tired of putting all of our money and our time into house without having anything left over to go on great vacations or you know do the things that we wanted to do with a family. So um, so we did. We sold that big house and we bought a little house. It's 790 square feet. There are um, six of us. One is a nine-month-old who is learning to walk already and is everywhere. And, um, and uh, yeah, we're paying off debt to hopefully get into a small house. We've realized that we could do great, um, great things with a small space. We want land, more land than house, so we have more room to roam and more money to play with. Um, so in the last year and a half, I've gotten very creative about organizing my things because I am very type A. Like Heidi just mentioned, I like to have my stuff in a space where I know it is and can always be found. You can ask my kids. I am constantly reworking our things so I can um, tell them where to put this one little thing that they got. You know, a new Happy Meal toy comes in and I've got to find a space for it. So it's been a really rough um, year getting used to that. But honestly now, um, I can see the benefits of it. We kind of spill out to all the different rooms. Like most houses, our kitchen is the center of everything, so the majority of our stuff is in the kitchen. We had a, a little nook um, where I put an IKEA bookshelf um, because it's versatile, so you can put um, cubbies in it. And um, there are two rows of cubbies that hold the books that I'm not using right now, materials um, for free play, things I can pull out at a moment's notice for the um, four-year-old to keep her busy. And um, and then the the next shelf above that has all the kids' books and anything that we're working on together, mystery of history, galloping the globe, some of our together activities, and so I can pull those out. And um, and then the three top shelves of that bookcase all house kitchen stuff, uh, flour, sugar, beans. Um, so we're multi-purposing all of our furniture. Um, it has the things that are required for the room that you're in as well as homeschool stuff and you can pretty much find that anywhere in our house um, things are doing rooms are doing double duty and um, things are hidden in boxes in baskets to be tucked away easily um, but also to be easily accessible it's not unusual for the kids to pull out the chalk pastels we're so in love with right now because they happen to be in the kitchen while I'm cooking dinner and it's right there and then um, to answer the problem of uh, cleaning up projects all the time, I strung a wire across our kitchen window and put um, binder clips on it so they can hang any work in progresses or um, finished projects. And then um, there are some, what used to be our old work boxes that have some empty space so they can tuck away other works in progress so we can get on with our day. I know those of you out there with young children know that you pretty much spend all day in the kitchen because if you're not meal planning or meal preparing, you are snack preparing or snack cleaning up because it seems like those little people eat all day long. So um, 
So we have right alongside of our pencils and pens, we have mason jars filled with Cheerios and trail mix and um, other easily accessible foods. There's a bowl of fruit out always. So there's always something to grab and um, there's always something healthy, a healthy choice, but it's right there organized with our homeschool stuff. So we never have to go far for anything. Um. I'm... I'm just nodding the whole time, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to let go in my kitchen because Brett brought it, bought us this big hutch. I'm like, you know, I could just put all that stuff in the kitchen, and we'd have all this blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, for you people that are not watching watching the event page live, you need to come over and, uh, and grab, grab the link to this blog post from Colleen because that, that's such an awesome, amazing, I'm just... I could have said that listen listen you talk about that all day because I'm like, oh man, this is great. So many, so many great ideas. Thank so you. that's a that's a big round of applause for you on well, that one. And then come at the end of the day when, you know, it looks like a hurricane hit the house and I've got to put everything back <laughs> in all those little mason jars. Because that does happen too. Don't worry about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. All right, well, let's talk about, um, I actually have a question from Renee. Let me scroll back and see if I can find that one. Thank you guys so much for, um, for throwing out questions. Um, let's kind of delve off into another, another little aspect of this, and I actually had this on my list to, to handle. What met Renee Brown uh, from, I think Renee is at Great Peace Academy, and yeah. you can kick me if I have that one wrong, Renee. Uh, what method do you purpose to rotate out old items and purge what what you won't be using again? Ugh. I don't I don't have any advice for that because you know I have I have too much too much junk everywhere. <laughs> um, anybody want to tackle that one? Like what? How? Look, there's Heidi. Yeah, let's roll. You go, girl. <laughs> I um I have only three children and my youngest is seven, and so. What I do is at the end of every school year for us, we run on a pretty traditional calendar. So like, you know, July rolls around, I start clearing out the, the schoolroom from, you know, what we've completed. And I actually keep bins, large plastic bins in our basement that are labeled. And um, I remove all of the stuff that my older two might have finished, you know, as far as um, textbooks or books, anything that they're using. And I put them in a labeled bin to keep you know, and I have their clear bins, and so I put a piece of paper inside them facing out with a list of the things that are located in the bin. And um, so I will put all of the things that I'm keeping because I will need them for the younger ones in bins down in the basement so that they're tucked away. And um, the things that my, you know, my children are getting through that I won't be using again if they're things that I can give away um, or donate. We have um, our local homeschool groups here. We often do like, you know, everybody brings their stuff and sets it out on tables to swap or whatever. And so I'll take those things and, uh, you know, try and give them to somebody else who, you know, would be able to find use um, out of them because for the most part I don't think when we're done with stuff that um, I could probably sell them very easily you know after you go through a few kids the books have seen some you know some pretty decent wear and um, so that's how I kind of keep up at the end of every year I rotate everything out so I you know I'll be putting away the, the stuff I'm keeping getting out the new stuff and putting that out on the shelves for what we're going to be using and immediately you know donating or passing along anything that will no longer be using and I have a similar um, a similar system. We um, in the basement we have bins that are labeled by subject, big plastic bins that are that are clear so you can see into them. And um, despite seeing into them, you still don't always know exactly what's in there. So I have a big label on it that says science or language arts or reading. I've broken that down even further because I have new readers, and um, and I go through that once a year and pull things out that I'm not going to use and give it away. Um, I've been given a lot over the years and um, have had things from when I used to teach or have been blessed with things to look at and review. So I don't, I, I don't want to sell things because I haven't had to buy a whole bunch um, of that kind of stuff. And when I do have to purchase something, I feel that it's a good investment because I can use it for multiple children. So I'm hoping to bless others and um, give it away um, too. So, yeah, I have a similar system in that it's their clear bins downstairs out of the way and I pull by quarter if I know I'm getting into a new topic or yearly if I'm um, switching into different grade levels. That's a great setup. I can't remember if it's smart. Somebody I talked to recently sets their stuff up like in six-week increments. Marlene, was that you? 
with everything like uh, uh Sam. Yeah, go ahead, tell say tell tell people about how you do your suck. I, I loved that idea. Um, we um, plan for six weeks. I print out everything that they need, and then I have a file system which I can share um, on the page where they that is on my blog. Um, I have it set up by those six week increments in like the larger hanging files in my Staples desktop apprentice system that I have in our classroom. And then inside of those I have each week's work in a separate folder so that each week I just pull out that folder of the current week and its work mm -hmm. and then sort it by day in this hanging system that I have. It's just like one of those little pocket folder things that you can get um, mm -hmm. online on Amazon. And so I set, sort it the days that we're going to be doing school. So each day we just pull out a new folder and the work that we need is there. And then, of course, mm -hmm. I'm like super OCD. So each of the days are paper clipped inside of that weekly. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. But it keeps down on the last minute confusion. You know, I, I'm getting up later than I used to because I'm working in the evening. And so I get up in the morning and I don't have time to really go upstairs and get everything set so I need it to be ready to go for me and actually I'm getting ready to do the next round of that this weekend because um, we're starting some different curriculum and so I have to get all of that stuff printed off but yeah I talk about it a lot and it, it really has been like a sanity saver for me to do that. That's a great idea. Amber, Amber Oliver over in the event room mentions that um, while she likes Colleen's idea of like immediately passing things along or get, getting getting rid of things that you're not that you don't need, she says, "Oh, I'm sorry." And look, I, I misread this. This is what I'm trying to do by multitasking. Yes, she was she wants to get rid of things that she's no longer needing. And thank you, Heidi. She mentioned Craigslist. Um, if you're on a, any kind of a homeschool swap, um, I see things go out all the time. Like um, on my local homeschool list, I'm I'm a member of like probably four or five local homeschool groups. I don't always do a whole lot of stuff with those folks, but I do frequently see um, people that are giving things away there. So if you've got if you've got things that you need to get rid of that you think might might bless people, okay, great. You throw throw them on the throw them on the list, um, Craigslist or your or your Yahoo group, whoever. Um, um we have them oh go ahead. I uh, also um if you're in, if you have other stuff that maybe you're interested in, um, even shipping, if you don't have a problem doing some of that, I mean, you can pay to put it on eBay or um, Hip Homeschool Moms has a list where you can put up all kinds of stuff for people, and you can choose to give it away or sell it for a cost. I know a lot of us don't want to deal with the shipping, which is why I mentioned Craigslist because you can do that locally. But you could also, you know, give. You need, I think you can give things away on eBay too, but it costs money. Um, but you can do something like the um, the Hip List at Hip Homeschool Moms that has free listings where you can list stuff to give away or to sell. And we've even done, um, we, I belong to an every other week co-op, and we don't, I mean, we only meet every other week, uh, six for six times, you know, 12 week sessions, so we only meet 12 times a year, but we've organized the past couple sessions, the last time we meet, everybody bring, you know, whatever they have at home that they don't need anymore, whether it's toys or clothes or school stuff, and um, everybody just opens their trunk in the parking lot, and people go and just take what they could use and give away what they can't use um, or you know things like that there's there's groups around um, that you can easily set that up because there, there are always moms that are interested in that I just I got a Latin program for this year for my son because the one I had for my daughters was too easy for him and um, it was through a Catholic homeschooling group that I don't have the opportunity to spend a ton of time with um, but when I do we kind of talk about the things that we have or the things that we're looking for and she happened to have this Latin program that had only been used once and said you know you can have it and instead of you know paying me or having to go buy it yourself would you consider donating to the Catholic group and so I did that you know because that was a blessing to our Catholic homeschool group and it helped me out she passed on some materials she does not need anymore and um, I donated to our Catholic group the money that I had earmarked to go purchase the Latin curriculum anyway so it's another idea that's a huge. That's a huge blessing. Um, I was going to mention too. Um, I don't know if you're looking for things. I looking for and or getting ready to getting rid of some stuff. Um, if you have 
Um, there are a few like kids consign. We have huge kids consignment sales in our area, and um, I have actually gone to those looking for homeschool supplies. Not so much, not so much the curriculums themselves, but like manipulatives, that sort of thing. So you could take the time to sell that stuff. You know, put it in a sale. If it doesn't, if it sells great, you get a little bit of money. If not, then you just mark it to donate at the end, and then it goes, it goes away. It's out of your house. We also have a couple times a year um, some sort of tr uh, some sort of teachers curriculum sale. Um, it's not specifically homeschoolers. It's it's edu educator, some sort of educator sale, and I don't always get to go to that one. But that's another place that you can kind of offload some stuff too, if you wanted to get rid of it. And sort of on the same note, um, so these were things that these were things that Amber was not going to use again. My other kind of part of that was how do you know what to keep? Um, you know, I don't want to keep every single piece of um, handwriting practice <laughs> <laughs> or uh, math problems, you know, from two years ago. So, like, you know, what do you what do you do there? Marlene, you, I'm gonna I'm gonna call on you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> like, what do you what do you decide? How do you know what to keep and what to get rid of? As far as like as like oh, old work. You know what I keep is things that show that they are progressing. Um, like shows like a new accomplishment, like, oh, she was finally able to do this. Uh, like milestones, basically, is what I end up keeping. If she has a whole bunch of those, I just keep probably either the first one she did, because that's the one, I guess, as a mom, I would want to see. It's like, oh, this is the first time you drew a circle. You know, I'll keep that one. Um, other than that, I I think probably about by the end of the year, I'll get rid of them. I'm, I tend to be a little bit of a hoarder with my kids' projects. But my husband's helped me, so <laughs> I'm learning to toss things out little by little. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only person. Anybody else have tips um, for that? Colleen's like, yes, me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this this actually was a big problem. Even we, for a little bit, quick background, we pulled my son out of school in the middle of first grade. So we had already collected a lot of worksheets, and you know, before finding out, well, we kind of knew, but that he's not a worksheet kid. And so we don't do a lot of worksheets right now, but um, from that, from having him go away to school for a while, I, you know, was drowning, and I had the vision of drowning with more and more and more kids. Um, so I started keeping, like Marlene said, a sample of either the first milestone, like I have the first person, like stick person, my my four-year-old drew, and um, then when she finally progressed to give it a little body and circular eyes and you know whatever. Um, and I scan those in, or I take um, digital photographs of our projects after they've played with them for a while. And every year, I'm a little behind, um, but every year I upload them to Shutterfly and I make a Shutterfly book. And so the kids have a Shutterfly book. I have my son went away to preschool um, in daycare because I was still teaching at the time. And I have a preschool um, Shutterfly book that starts on his first day of preschool and it ends on his preschool graduation. And he has a kindergarten book. And um, he has a first grade book that is half first grade at school and half first grade at home. And that's actually where I've stopped with him because I've caught up with the girls a little bit and done some preschool and kindergarten. But they love it. They absolutely love it. And I can save them on Shutterfly. So like um, his preschool one was looked at so many times by him and his sisters that I've had to have it reprinted and pay to have a new copy made. And what I think I'm going to do going forward is print one to just put away so they can have them and then have another one made that they can all look at and leave out on display. They love looking through that. And then my kids do a lot of lap books. So we, um, we put those in a binder or magazine uh, holders and they can pull those out as they need to or want to or they can show them to, um, to visitors that come. Uh, so we found a solution for that because I don't want to save everything. Um, if it's a, a project that they want to play with, which is oftentimes the case, I'll give them a time limit. You can play with this for a month. After a month, I'm going to photograph it, and it's going in the book, and it's going in the trash. And so I'm pretty ruthless about that now. So That's awesome. Heidi, go ahead. I want to hear from you, too. <laughs> 
I love the books, by the way, Colleen. I think that's fantastic. Um, I do a lot of similar things. I have not printed books myself, although um, I've had my older daughter do some projects. Like she's done, um, she did this great poetry thing one year, and she wrote all this poetry, and we ended up having her type it up. And she went through all of our photos and found photos that went with the things because she kind of did holidays. Like she had done um, something about Halloween, and so you know there was a personal photo from our pumpkin patch, you know, time. Or, so we've done a few things like that with books um, that they've made, but um, I do a lot of photographing too. Colleen, I cannot stand having projects around for too long. You can only keep so many dioramas, so many you know hanging mobiles, so many, and so we will photograph them. But we have everything uh, digitally on our computer, and um, my kids will sit on the computer for hours and go through old photos of things that they've done, projects that they've done. And um, the things that we physically do keep, I have, um, along with our clear bins downstairs, I keep labeled bins. And each bin for the three kids holds about two years' worth of stuff by the time I'm kind of done cleaning out because my little ones do a lot of lap books, and I do keep those. Any, you know, Anything like that, um, I will often keep. My daughter one year did this whole project where she made um, flags, and it made this border around our room in flags and I did actually keep that and um, so I keep labeled bins and each year I will empty out basically the previous year you know the math book you know notebooks the you know I don't keep any of that kind of stuff after a year once I'm like okay we're a year beyond this I'm ready to let it go and um, so then I will empty out all the notebooks and workbooks, any workbooks that I've bought that, you know, whether it be grammar workbooks or whatever that the kids, kids have filled in, I just get rid of them. And I only save um, a few major projects that they've done and I, everything else I photograph as far as projects or activities that they've done. And I love, I'm not sure who it was on the in the forum there, but I love Evernote myself too, and I will take photos and scan things and catalog them in Evernote as well. Um, it's it's my new thing. Um, a, a couple months ago, I started doing it, and I am really loving um, cataloging and saving everything that way in Evernote. It really is a great system um, to use over there. Sorry, I was like muting myself. I did see a couple of people mention Evernote, Evernote over over in the comment room too. So that's a that's a good idea because you can scan thing, you can scan stuff directly into Evernote, um, or take a picture and upload it, and then just kind of organize. It's very easy to organize once you kind of get in and, and dig around a little bit. And actually, that's not a bad idea to start using that a little bit more for my homeschool. homeschool I actually stuff. started using it because my youngest likes to write me notes. And, um, you know, she'll color me pictures, little hearts and little notes and sayings, and she'll leave them around. And they're just so sweet. And I have a collection of them that I started tacking to the wall in our bedroom, too. But I didn't want to lose them or not have them later. And I was like, oh, if I take pictures of these. And so I take pictures of them, and then I just tag them in Evernote. And, um, you know, that way, if I do lose that piece of paper or it gets ratty or, you know, I have forever, you know, saved that moment in time where she sent me this cute note or wrote me this cute, you know, whatever. And that's how I started doing it. And now I'm doing it so much more with a lot of our homeschool stuff. And I keep a virtual notebook and Evernote for each one of our children. That's my dog, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, let me, what about, um, I'm going to let Marlene and Sam tackle this one. What about craft supply? Because we've kind of, We've 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 tackled a little bit of this of the paperwork issue. Thank goodness. What about stuff like um, craft supplies or art supplies? Because I know if you have littles, and I know Marlene does, and I know Sam does too. If you have littles, oh my word! Um, <laughs> I have a craft I have a craft supply addiction. Like I love back to school sales because I'm like yes, glue yeah. sticks for like a dime. So I have a lot of that kind of stuff. So I'd love to hear from you guys about like what do you do? How do you organize like craft and art supplies? Um, I have a plastic bin, um, and then I have a little one of those little caddies that have three drawers in them, um, and that's where I store all of our art supplies. And I actually got into the habit of putting tape on the side of it so my four-year-old wouldn't go and pull everything out. Um, cause she loved like after we were done doing stuff, she'd go in and pull everything out again and start it and it would get everywhere. And that was the biggest problem. 
Um, especially we live in an apartment, so we don't want to get the carpet all messed up or anything, but even if we live in our own house, I wouldn't want the floor to get all messed up. Um, so I kind of tape the sides at the end of the day. I just use like painter's tape because it can come off and on super easily. And um, that's, that's just how I store it. And we have it in the corner to the left of our um, TV stand. So it's kind of tucked away. It's not out in the open. It's not like taunting her all day long to want to play with them or anything like that. And she knows we pull it out, we use them, and then we just put them right back where they were found. So it just works for us. I keep forgetting that I've muted myself. <laughs> but thankfully, Google will tell me. It's like a big, it'll be like a big red bar. Hello, you're muted. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned that because um, we love a workbox system of sorts. Like um, I actually copied off Colleen. This is a this was a long time in coming. Um, and we have all I have the drawer style set up for the kids, and like each drawer is their subjects and so on and so forth. Okay, well that worked out beautifully until the baby started walking and tossing everything over. So I love the because my I had two options. Okay, do I pull the the rolling? It's a rolling cart. Do I pull that out of the living room? And I'm like, great. Now where am I going to put that in the bedroom? That's lovely. Uh, but that I love the idea of the painter's head because I could, I really could kind of just put one piece down each side and kind of hopefully deter her. <laughs> a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm destroying it's everything. <laughs> that's that's just quick, and you're like, you have them start off. So that's awesome. Sam, what about you guys? Well, I'm noticing in the um, the comments that my pen addiction has come up, Renee. Um, <laughs> we're not talking about that today. That's that's a whole other hangout. We could do a whole hangout on pens, or at least I could. Um, we have um, a cabinet in the corner of our homeschool room that is locked. It has like one of those child locks at the top that you have to be tall enough to push down and then pull the door back. It's kind of irritating and makes me crazy to have to use it, but that is where I keep the stuff um, that I don't want the kids to get into. The paints, um, the more expensive art supplies, some extra stuff that I just don't want them bothering, and all of that stuff lives in plastic tubs inside of the cabinet. So that's where the bulk of our art supplies live. And then the stuff like crayons and pencils and uh, markers and things like that, they are on shelves and bins uh, where the kids can access them. But everything that is more artsy, I keep locked away, and it's worked out really, really well. And well, that's a good point because. Um Oh, my stuff is not locked away. It probably needs to be. But I'm thinking like for things that are a little bit more expensive, like your chalk pastels, like your nicer, not, as your kids get older especially, your nicer art supplies that you, you know, you that this was an investment. You, you spend a little bit more money on this kind of stuff. So, yeah, that stuff's always going to get put up somewhere. Um, right. In my house, it's Sharpies. Or mom's pens, they get put away because I don't want people messing with my stuff. So yeah, plus I don't want to find Sharpie on the wall <laughs> like I've done before. That's, that's where I also keep all of the stuff that I had accumulated craft-wise before we even started homeschooling. So it's just kind of in a, in a specific location in the house where everybody knows if we're doing Christmas ornaments or making coasters for Christmas presents, you know, all of the supplies that we have purchased over the years to make homemade gifts for people all live right. in there as well. So we know exactly where to go. If we're making a craft, we're going to the cabinet. That's a great idea. People over in the event room are mentioning um, the Sterilite containers or Rubbermaid containers, whatever whatever their names are. There's a few different brands. But um, the key, thank you, Lauren Hill, is that they're clear because that way you can actually see what's in them quickly. Um, Somebody mentioned, uh, Amber's mentioned she's got plastic bins, one's full of paint supplies, and that kind of, I kind of had that system going on too um, before the baby was here, and that, that way I could pull out all the paint or all the Play-Doh um, accoutrements, you know, the, the rollers and the cutters and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's basically just, you know, find a system, you know, whatever works for you. Some, some of the stuff that we're mentioning, um, may not work for you, may not like having big plastic bins full of things all over the house. I don't know. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I'm trying to think if I have other stuff. Um, something I wanted to mention, um, 
worksheets. I know a lot of us, not me, um, many of us uh, make fancy pants creatables on our websites, um, worksheets, and and that sort of thing. So I'd like to hear. I, I have. A, I actually gleaned a really good tip from my friend Ashley, but I kind of want to know from you guys too. Um, tell me about like how do you store worksheets and printables because that seems to be um, one of the banes of my existence because um, you know you'll see things you'll I'll see things um, oh that's a great um, Halloween word search look I'm, I'm picking on Lauren again because I, I think I'm thinking of Lauren's printables um, but like so my but then my de okay my desk is covered with like this practice pre-writing cut things uh, you know whole words word searches over here so like how do you organize printables so that you know where they are and they're not taken out of your house if um if I've printed them already I have a small plastic file folder box and or you can even buy the cardboard ones that are really inexpensive and I label all the file folders and like you know maybe I have all the holidays or um, certain like handwriting or you know whatever it may be coloring sheets and um, and I will keep them in a file in a file folder box and we have um, our kids do most of their work around uh, like a breakfast nook table and the benches they actually are just high enough that the file folder cardboard boxes will fit underneath them and so I have one slid under there with labeled file folders and that's how I keep any printables that I have printed and want to use so if we get to something like oh we're getting close to Halloween what kind of goodies have I collected or you know whatever or I want to do some handwriting or I remember that you know whatever about sharks that I wanted and you know I'll pull out the box and you know I have like an animal folder you know and then pull out okay where's that shark one so at least it's somewhat contained and along along um, those lines I um, I don't print anything until just before I'm ready to use it I have organized um, folders in my um, in my documents file online that I've actually just now started backing up to um, Google Drive so I have it saved and I have a separate folder. I mean my in my years of freelancing I've had to come to some pretty creative ways to organize my research or I'd lose it so my my folders are pretty specific I have in my documents I have homeschool and then in my homeschool folder I have each subject and in those folders I have topics so you know in my science folder I'll have in my homeschool and then science folder I'll have lap books or I'll have you know ebooks that I've downloaded or um, printables that I've gotten from other sites and I'll even further break it down by grade because I have a baby a preschooler um, a kindergarten slash first grader and then an upper elementary school kid so I'll do that that being said there are some things that you know I have already printed and laminated for you know my six-year-old when she was younger that I'd like to pull out now for my four-year-old um, and when I do that, if it's something that I know I'm going to use again, I do laminate it and um, I do what Heidi said. I have one file folder. It's a cheap metal file folder from like Target or Walmart. I think it costs like $35 on sale one year. And I have it in the basement. The top drawer has um, labeled hanging folders uh, through the alphabet. And um, so like all of the letter of the week type printables. You know, I've got all my A things, all my B things, and then I've got a folder for animals because that seems to be a topic all kids like, and I pull those back out, and um, and then anything that we do, like if my kids are doing a lap book or they're interested in something, I print out all the things that go with that lap book or that unit study that we're going to do, and they have a large Ziploc baggie. It is not fancy at all. It is a large baggie with their name on it in permanent Sharpie, and that gets tucked away in their uh, work box area when they're not using it but they always know that when it's time to work on you know um, whatever sharks is now coming to my mind because Heidi said that and we just finished that but when you know it was time to work on the sharks lap book my son would pull his out and then my daughter would pull out her little shark um, puzzles and things that I'd printed and thrown in the Ziploc baggie for her so again everything in its place slightly type A but yeah the things that I've printed already are in a file drawer labeled by the alphabet or the holiday the bottom one I didn't say is for holidays or months of the year so I have like Jan one January February through December and then I also have um, other ones behind that so that has like calendar things or things that are seasonal and then behind that I'll have a Halloween folder 
a Christmas folder, an Advent folder. Um, so yeah, file folders are great, and um, it's great to just be able to tuck them away, like Heidi said, you know, in her underneath in her kitchen, or like I have it in my basement. I told you, I'm just like a hot mess of disorder. I'm like, <laughs> let me take my headset off so I can just go dig through all this junk and label everything. How am I not, why do I not have a label maker? How, how am I a homeschool mother and I don't have a label maker? I have a laminator. Well, there you go. No, lab, no label maker. So, yeah, well, I actually did mention the label maker to my husband the other day. He's like, what do you need that for? I'm like, Mm, trust me, I would label everything in this house. That way I would know what's what. <laughs> well, I, I know. I'm laughing at Lauren now over in the event room. She says she's going to hire you to organize all the homeschool supplies. And, and, well, don't forget uh, your all of your digital files, too, because mine's a hot mess. I've got things saved in Evernote and in Google Drive, and there's one called Box. Um, I don't know if you all use that one or not, but that was that was some sort of you know, cloud storage. I'm sure I have things saved somewhere in iCloud. I don't know what I have saved there, but and there's another one besides Evernote, and I can't think of what it's called now. <laughs> but there's like a bazillion of all these cloud of cloud storage. So a good idea would be to utilize it and um, have it organized, <laughs> and not not be a hot mess like mine. Um, and then I want to hear from people. Um, like we we are all very familiar with. Um, the Sterilite boxes, and um, I call them roll like rolling carts. Like I can see one, I can see one in the background of Marlene. Um, <laughs> say something, you'll pop up. Hi. <laughs> so she's got the, like there's like a what do you call those things? Those are like the file organizer deals. Yeah. So we have we have all these things that are like kind of standard office supplies. So um, does anybody have? Um, like, do you use things kind of out of the box, um, like um, something that wasn't normally intended to be some sort of organi organizational storage unit, but has that has uh, you know saved your saved your life? I have one in mind, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that up here until somebody else chimes in. Anybody? Um, I feel like I'm dominating the conversation today. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, we have to because we have 790 square feet. Um, I have an ottoman. It's uh, it used to have like a nesting ottoman in it, a smaller ottoman. The smaller one is in the kids' room, and the bigger one has all my photo albums, and then those um, those Shutterfly books that I've printed for the kids, so they can pull those out. Um, we have uh, we have lots of IKEA. <laughs> bookshelves, those ones that you see pretty much in every homeschooler's room if you travel the homeschool blogs. Um, and we have baskets and boxes for those. And yeah, if you go in my kitchen, one of those boxes might have all of the sugar things, honey, agave, uh, brown sugar, white sugar, all of that. And then the one next to it has math manipulative. Um, and so it's it's using baskets. We use baskets a lot. I have a big basket um, that's tucked. It, it was meant for like magazines in a in a living room, and it has Lincoln Logs right now because the kids are are interested in that. Um, we don't have closet space in this room or in this house, so the kids have these wire drawers that are in their bedrooms, and the top four have their clothes in them. The bottom one has, we're calling it a treasure drawer. It's all that, pardon me, the kids can't hear, junk that they pick up everywhere and cannot bear to part with. And so they can leave it in there until they forget about it and I go clean it, you know, once every six months because they don't remember what they've put in there. Um, we have flower pots that have um, pencils and um, all sorts of other things. Uh, we've got color, color cubes or Unifix cubes in um, a flower pot right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, those aren't ultra non-conventional, but, um, like, you know, the ottoman and that kind of thing, it, just using anything with a space that tucks things out of the way, um, I think is a smart use of your space because it integrates things into the family and doesn't separate necessarily homeschool and life. Um, it's there. You can pull it out and work on it or build or experiencing it. Um, actually, let me, one more thing. We have, like, in our kitchen um, on our workbox area, we have a bread machine, and then right next to it we have mealworms and locust shells. So we have, you know, the, the science stuff 
is on our carts in our kitchen because well, first of all, where else are you going to put it? And second of all, um, again, it's integrating you know life and and school together that it's all part of the same thing. So um, I guess that's kind of non-conventional. I'll shut up now. <laughs> I'm just I'm just laughing at the picture at the middle picture of the mealworms beside the bread machine. <laughs> Check out my Instagram stream. There's a meal room on there today. We're, we're oh kind of living goodness. in right now. <laughs> that made me. That made we, me laugh. We actually use an entertainment center, multiple entertainment centers, the ones that actually have doors that would close off the the TV if it were in there, and because it's such a nice large sp large space within where a TV should be, then we took drawer drawer systems like plastic drawer systems and put them in there so that there's clear plastic drawers inside that are labeled um, that is where I keep our more expensive art supplies there's a drawer for those um, there's a drawer for like the kids building kits or there's a drawer for the folders that they use for for their um, lap booking or you know and then the shelf is still in there and up on top of that then I have that all organized as well and what I love about that is because you can close the doors and you don't see it it's still nice and neat and you can put a baby proof you know lock on the outside of it and you know keep keep the little ones out and in the lower cupboards of that it also has doors as well and we have all of our paper construction paper white paper scrapbooking paper you know all that stuff and in, in the in the lower portion of it for the kids so that it's easier for them to access because it's at their height and we have two of two of those cabinets like that one that's in our homeschool room and one that we have down in our what is our family room and that houses not only computer equipment but all of our board games and so they're all kind of tucked away and hidden um, so that we can kind of close the doors and minimize on how cluttered the space looks I think we might have been separated at birth, Heidi, because no. <laughs> at my old house, even though we had the more space, we had our, our entertainment center, our armoire was the same way. It had the kids, you know, the puzzles and stuff that they could reach on the bottom and then all the expensive artwork on top. And we had a dining room sideboard that did not have precious silverware in China. It had, you know, in the drawers, one was pencils, one was pens, one was markers, and uh, that was right in our dining room. So it's funny. I was laughing as you said that. <laughs> I love to be able to hide stuff in places where, almost in plain sight, where you know you can have those things close and have them, but they don't necessarily have to be jumping out at everyone every time they come in the house, or right. you know, because for me, I try to keep I try to keep the clutter to a minimum, and doing stuff like that definitely helps. We've seen some awesome ideas from uh, from our panel people, and also over in the event room. Um, I am seeing things like microwave carts and china cabinets, um, all kinds, a host of just all kinds of stuff. Um, let me wrap it up. I want to actually um, talk uh, real quick about we talked about supplies and um, kind of getting rid of our old stuff, and then uh, like our kids' artwork, that sort of thing. Talk to me about um, organi organizing the administrative end of homeschooling, um, like keeping track of grades and attendance, that sort of thing, because I know that there'll be people watching that'll want to hear about that. Um, I happen to live in a state where I don't have to do a whole lot of that because uh, we're pretty lenient, thankfully, because, you know, I'm uh, <laughs> not that organized. So, <laughs> uh, But I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I know Sam can talk about her system, and I don't remember I talked to Marlene about hers before. Um, tell me what you use again, Sam. You're not a homeschool helper person. It's, or maybe it is. I can't remember. Tell me, tell me what you use. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it is the um, the homeschool helper, um, the app that I use. Um, I also use paper first for everything because I like to map out and see things because I'm much more a paper person than digital. As much as I like technology, I'm a paper planner person. I like to set my goals for homeschool up on paper. I have a binder for homeschooling and all of that. And then I just like the organized look of um, what the digital products can allow for. Um, the high school is what's getting me the most because he is not good at keeping track on his own, which I have one of those well-planned day for your high school planners for him, which he didn't use. So I think that what I'm going to have to end up going back and doing is 
writing down his work each week like I would be doing, you know, for the other kids and just let him check it off because he likes to do his own thing and like I'll find out that he's not doing any of the things that I've set up for him to do and his claim is that he didn't even know that I had given him anything to do as an assignment. So um, that's that's really my hang up right now. My I'm horrible with report cards too. I, I know that even in Kentucky you're supposed to keep those. But I mean I have everything to make one if I had to make one, but I'm horrible about making them. So that I think is like my biggest homeschool fail, not keeping up with those, you know, I don't know, it just seems kind of odd to me to make my kids a report card, you know, it's too school feely, you know what I mean? I just, I don't like it. Marlene, what do you, do you have anything, What? how do you keep track of all of your stuff? Um, I use the Well Plan Day Planner. Um, I started using it a couple years ago and I love it. I kind of do like an outline of what we're going to do for the week and um, I write um, next to each time she has a test or a quiz or anything, I'll just write down the grade in the back of the book. Um, you can keep track of grades by semester, by quarter, and there's also like an attendance thing you can go in and check off. And um, she also uses the, um, the student planner, which we just started using this year. And it's actually working out pretty good for us because she's been dying to have a planner, my oldest, because my youngest just does what I give her, but my oldest has been dying for a planner, so um, that's been the best way for us to keep track of it. If I didn't have those two things, I think I'd be completely lost. <laughs> or I'd have like 5,000 sheets of paper everywhere written out with everything I wanted to do, so. Yeah, that would, that would be me, the 5,000 <laughs> sheets of paper, because, you know, um, if I print out something that looks cute, a to-do list of cuteness, then maybe I'll actually do what's on the to-do list. So, I don't know. Um, my, I, I was sort of leaning toward a planner for my, for my seven-year-old because, because I love planners. And of course, I just assume that mm -hmm. my children are going to love planners. Um, my daughter, Eldest, who is now in college, I don't have any idea. I have no clue how she keeps up with things because I don't see her write anything down. And she hated planners when she was young because she went to public school. So they, they would have to come home and they would write down their assignment, copy their assignments off the board into the planner. And there would be things. I'm like, didn't you write this down? How do you know? How? Because that's how I am. It, had to, it has to be written out for me. So, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm finding the urge to get the student planner for, for Rachel because... I, she'll probably just fling it at me because, like, what is this? I mean, she's never even seen one before. How can she know what to do with it? She might love um, it. She'll give it a try. She might. She yeah. might. I might. Now, Heidi, um, you are a homeschool helper person, too. I can't remember. You can do something tracker. on the computer. Homeschool tracker. Okay. Sam is homeschool helper app. Yes. Heidi is homeschool tracker. If you go to Heidi's site, yeah, tell you got you have a whole shebang about the homeschool tracker, right? I, I did. Um, was it last week? I did a video on a little bit of what I do with homeschool tracker, and um, I had to chuckle at Sam talking about her teenager and his uh, well planned day book because um, I actually bought one for my teenager who started high school this year, and um, I insist on making her fill it in herself and um, it's kind of become her teenaged angst. It's what she tells all her friends bad mommy made her do. She, oh, she has to do her planner. <gasps> the world has come to an end. And um, so every Sunday um, evening, I, you know, I kind of gave her a skeleton list, like, you know, a piece of paper that says, okay, you got to do math every day. Science is four days a week. History is, you know, maybe three days a week. And so she kind of has a a skeleton key and um, our history unit spread out over three weeks and so she'll when the first of those three weeks she has to spread that out over the three weeks in her planner so that I can see it and um, so every Sunday I check her planner and make sure that she's covered all the subjects and things that we you know that were coming up for that week and um, make sure that each day looks like she's going to have enough time based on any outside activities that are listed and um, and then we put her grades in there as well and then I enter those into homeschool tracker because that really is my primary um, record-keeping system whereas with our younger children I plan everything in homeschool tracker I print out assignment sheets for them they check them off as they go and then I'll enter the grades you know um, a after they're they've completed a subject 
And uh, so I'm still using Homeschool Tracker as my primary, but I wanted my teenager to um, to own her schedule a little more. And I was surprised to find that um, as much as she complained, she finds herself so thrilled when she gets to a day and she's like, oh, look, I'm done with everything. And, you know, she feels accomplished having finished, you know, her tasks that she set out to do. I'm nodding because I know Colleen and I have had, have had conversations about this. Um, I know that you, don't you involve some of don't you involve your children in, in what they're and the planning and like how this is, you had you had to keep track of what you're doing yes yeah I have um, a planner that I do and actually I just this year I have the well trained uh, the well planned day for me and then I just this year got um, the kids um, each Molly and Trevor their um, their own well planned day planner and um, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, and uh, I'll be writing actually about that soon. We've been using it now for um, a couple months, and there are pluses and minuses. They're a little young. Uh, my six-year-old is definitely too young, um, and uh, the, my ten-year-old is a boy, <laughs> so that's a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> but um, it's helping us to take things off of me um, and putting it on them. If it's in your planner, I'm not nagging you all the time. Your planner is. Uh, you haven't done it. It's it, we have a long way to go with it. Um, like Diana, I, um, when she says she's in a state that doesn't have a lot of requirements, I'm very fortunate. I have a teaching degree and I keep it up, um, so I can actually uh, I administer my own assessments and I actually do assessments for other people in the state of Ohio. Um, and so um, so as long as I'm keeping track for myself and I know what's going on, then we're okay with that. Um, but I am trying to utilize a planner better. I am a work in progress with that because I'm the kind of person who sees a shiny new planner and I want to buy it and start it and scratch my old one and start all over again. And so I get lots and lots of planners throughout the years and go halfway through the year with it and then try another system or another system or create my own and then create another one and tweak it. So um, I struggle with follow through on my own planning and um, am definitely, definitely a work in progress on that. So um, I'm not really a great one to talk about with that yet. <laughs> I'm working on that one. Well, I just wanted to re just remind everybody, it's all, it's at some point in time, like it, organization works differently for everybody, but that's part of, of our kids growing and learning and becoming adults is that they're going to have to do they're going to have to figure something out on their own. So that's kind of part, that's part and parcel of homeschooling too, I think, is just to teach them a little about, you know, about how to be organized and kind of exploring a few different ways that may or may, that may or may not work for them too. So I think that brings us to the end, to the end of our day. We got a little bit of a late start and we kind of ran a little bit over, but I knew that this topic was just huge and ginormous and we would just we would run with this. This is one that we could talk on this really all day long. Um, once again I want to thank my wonderful ladies um, on the panel that have been here with me today. Um, once again Colleen Kessler you can find her <laughs> you can find her at Raising Lifelong Learners. Heidi Sarah help me how do you, how do I pronounce your last name again? Sarah Vola. Sarah Vola, I should have just went with it. <laughs> Heidi is it. Heidi is it starts at eight dot com. I'm Diana Kennedy at the Kennedy Adventures. Marlene Griffith is at a diligent heart dot com, and Sam Kelly is at Sam's Kel Sam's <gasps> Sam's noggin dot com. Sorry about that. I'm I'm butchering all this today. Once again, if you cannot find us, if you can't be here live, um. It's most, it's most fun to be here live with us because then you can hang out in the event room and throw questions up to us and hopefully get them answered um, if we have time. Um, so it's every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. On, on the Pacific Coast. Um, every Thursday we, we handle homeschool topics, family management topics, holiday stuff. I mean, this is a little bit of everything. So if you are a homeschooler, whether you're a veteran, or a newly homeschool mom, if you're just a starting homeschooling, if you want to hang out with some moms that um, have big families or small families, um, we're here for a lot of people. Um, some of the topics that we've got coming up over the next few weeks um, include um, homeschool field trips and ideas. I'm really excited about that one because um, I love field trips. 
um, customizing your homeschool routine and schedule. It's going to be it's going to look a little bit like this. I think um, once again, individual for everybody. Homeschooling your preschooler, teaching worldview, some holiday prep stuff. We've got all kinds of things um, that I'm, I'm excited to be a part of. You can download a schedule over at ihomeschoolnetwork.com slash hangouts and join us here at each and every Thursday. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.